Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the comp video. We're going to be talking about Zen. It is, of course, the upcoming architecture from AMD and had a lot of press recently about its potential performance and how it will actually make AMD competitive again with Intel and usher in a new high end performance processor for AMD. Now, what's rather interesting is AMD have actually released some information thanks to an annual meeting of stockholders during which the company basically uh, discloses certain information to their well stockholders about their future plans their products ip ip uh, strategies and basically what they're planning to do in the market to make money right which kind of makes a lot of sense during this very conference amd decided to disclose quite a bit of information regarding zen and what they've disclosed is kind of exciting. Essentially, the too long didn't read, and we'll be going through more of this as we go through the video. The Zen Core is going to be highly competitive. It will indeed be able to really keep up with the highest end CPUs from Intel and will decimate AMD's current lineup of processors. It's going to offer about twice the performance as an FX8350, which is pretty darn impressive when you consider. Furthermore, the company also released some die shots. This gives us at least an inkling of how the processor will work internally. Now, it's important to know before we go any further, some of this is speculation, um, so do take it as such, but some of it is also benchmarks and basically AMD, I guess you could say, boasting about what they've managed to achieve thanks to their new process technology, that was 14NM, the fact that they're including simultaneous multi-threading, and a whole bunch of other stuff, which will make the processor very uh, interesting, to say the least. I'd also like to point out, of course, that once the processor is officially unveiled, um, no doubt the press, perhaps even ourselves, we usually do get them, uh, will receive various breakdowns and analysis from AMD themselves, which basically disclose how the architecture works, and they do that for the purposes of review. So by all means, if you're very interested in this stuff, do stick around and we'll do a more in-depth analysis once stuff is officially released. But with all of that said, let's get into the slides themselves and start to discuss how this processor is going to potentially perform. So the number that was banded about for some time is, of course, the 40% IPC improvement, which was over-excavated, just to clarify. This basically is the figure that which represents the architectural improvements per clock speed versus the previous generation. So basically what, the, what you can get if you're running the two processors essentially at the same speed, running the same applications. Now, just like you could imagine, Certain applications may perform slightly better, some applications might perform slightly worse, and we're going to have to really wait till reviews to get an exact measurement, but 40%, I'm going to guess, is the rough average which AMD internally right now are uh, aiming for. AMD have decided to provide that information. So what they did is they compared uh, internally the Orochi module, which is a quad-core processor, uh, 8 CPU die, uh, which actually powers the FX8350, just to clarify. So it's not an APU or anything like that. They are comparing apples to apples, not apples to oranges. Uh, so basically we're looking at very similar clock speeds and probably very similar performance goals. In this case, Cinebench R15. So what they then did is they compared Orochi to Summit Ridge, which of course is the code name for Zen. And the difference is absolutely startling. It's around twice the performance, which is absolutely madness. Now, there is something to remember with this. Well, actually, a couple of things. The first is that Orochi is a pile driver cores rather than excavators, and excavators around 50% faster per clock. And also, additionally, this is single thread performance. So what the difference is going to be when we start to add multi-threading into the equation because we know that obviously Zen, assuming the rumours are true, AMD are going to be focusing on 8 cores at launch 
with SMT. So basically each core can handle two threads, which is very much like hyper-threading from Intel, which in a nutshell means that we should see 16 threads from the processor. Supposedly, um, the rumors are, and it makes a great deal of sense logically, that AMD will potentially release a six core variant as well. This was probably to do with yields because obviously if one processor core doesn't work, just simply because of yields, let's say three, and I'm just pulling numbers out, I don't know what the actual process technology and uh, y real yields are, but just pulling out my butt, let's say for every 10 um, eight cores and modules, three have seven or six cores actually working, it makes a great deal of sense for them not to just trash those cores or recycle them, but instead to sell them to customers as six core variants, which makes it cheaper for AMD and also cheaper for us as customers, especially if you don't necessarily feel that you need an eight core processor, right? Which is fair enough. Theoretically speaking, particularly if you start to account for the fact that the processor once again does have a great deal more CPU cores available and threads actually available over, once again, the 8350. It's theoretically possible that the processor could be faster than Intel's 8-core i7-5960X. And the reason I say faster is because we don't know the clock speeds. It could be slightly slower, but it could also be a little faster. And that's kind of insane when you think about it. Now, some folks might say, well, gee, that's not bad, but why is it not faster than that still? Well, you've got to remember that Intel were more advanced than AMD in terms of their processor performance. AMD have basically made a huge leap forward with Zen. And if they manage to achieve this at a decent pricing compared to, once again, the extravagant prices of, let's say, the 5960X, which, um, as of the time of my recording this, and I'm just going to quickly check, is currently actually on sale, and I'm just using Amazon prices here, so your mileage may vary depending on your regional equivalents, but using Amazon.com, I'm sorry, Amazon.co.uk, I felt bad, didn't I? It's currently going for around 820, and it was over a thousand uh, just a while back. So, if Zen manages to achieve this for, let's say, the the normal high-end pricing for desktop of around the 300 mark, which was what uh, Skylake 6700K and other CPUs were introduced at, that's not shabby. That's actually pretty darn good. And I can see that a lot of folks, whether they're gaming uh, or whether they're aimed at, let's say, uh, media creation, it could be very interesting. Now, getting into the die shots, these have already been analysed several times over, so instead I'm just going to read the most popular analysis, which, to be honest with you, I'm kind of agreeing with anyway, because unless AMD are going to market, market themselves and say, hey, this is where this lives, this is where this lives, and this does what this does, we can only really make interpretations based upon the blobs in the pixels. But it looks like we have two large rectangular structures which basically look to be groupings of cores. So these seem to be four cores and cache, and obviously we've also got the memory interface as well, which I don't really think I need to explain what memory interface this does. What it would appear, and this lines up really nicely with previous leaks, we've had a lot of leaks on the internet, of course, regarding Zen and what AMD are potentially planning to do, and even Lisa Su, during this very same investors conference, mentioned a hell of a lot, particularly in 2017, that AMD want to start touting out Zen to server farms. Essentially, they want to use that processor in, let's say, um, high-end cloud servers, that type of stuff. So what we know from that is AMD are going to be doing this by supposedly offering 16 and 32 core modules of Zen, which is a hell of a lot of processor cores. So what this would appear to be is that, well, all of the rumors seem to be basically very much in line. For, uh, for Summit Ridge on the desktop, it appears, and once again, we could only base this on what we can see in this image, there appears to be two quad-core modules. 
and then we have a separate memory interface for each of those groupings which once again lines up rather nicely from what we'd already it's it's kind of interesting because you could definitely see the the fairly generous amount of cash that AMD have bundled in with Zen you're looking at 8 megabytes of level 3 and plus you've got the level 2 cache as well uh, which is 512 kilobytes which is quite a lot for cache of level 2 um, obviously different cache levels level 3 is slightly slower but usually larger and level 2 faster but obviously a lot smaller and the purpose of cache just for those of you who don't know is to store very frequently used instructions so that it processor doesn't have to keep farming out to main system memory which basically reduces latency and speeds up the access of the chip and data. Now there are a couple of questions which still remain unanswered because if you look at this it looks very much a complete package and one can make the fairly valid argument that it's going to be pretty big even if you account for the fact that this is going to be a 14nm processor it's still pretty darn big. Um, so how that's going to work in reality, uh, and I'm not referring to the desktop, I am speaking only for the servers. Um, back in the old days, you saw the Optrons, which sometimes used to use MCMs, multi-chip modules. Uh, we've discussed those on RGT several times over. Or it could be more akin to the high bandwidth memory route and how they've managed to stack things. Which kind of makes sense because some rumours, and once again this is going back maybe a year-ish, I'm pulling that out of the archives, but about a year ago there were other rumours that were circulating with Zen. Primarily once again aimed at servers. And this was that they were going to A, stack it with high bandwidth memory too, and B, that was going to be also packaged with lots of GCN cores, which basically means that you could farm out a lot of compute work. However, obviously all of this is pure speculation, and without AMD saying, hey, this is what we're planning, we can only make some guesstimates. But what we can say is Lisa Su seemed very confident regarding the projections of the dates of launch. Now... 2017 is the date that we're going to be seeing it, supposedly, for servers. But since I'm going to assume the majority of you probably are not running servers, then you probably don't care about that. So instead, AMD did say that they are currently, and I quote, Silicon running in labs now, meeting expectations and remains on track for availability during 2016. Theoretically speaking, this should mean that we should be able to... Now, supposedly, we will see Zen for your desktop. So, you can basically buy it as a customer around October-ish time. Um, even if you say that slips a month, that's not too bad. And I think, considering the pain of the pricing right now of Pascal, most likely Polaris and all of the other technology, it's kind of good that it's staggered. Honestly, this next couple of, well, let's say the next year is going to be really expensive. We do know some tiny fractions of information, fractors of information, if you will, regarding Zen, uh, the follow-up to Zen more specifically, known as Zen Plus. It's looking roughly like 10 to 15% improvement over the previous iteration, um, and that's probably going to be released at some point in 2017, maybe 2018. There's not exactly that much information regarding it, which not really surprising, um, which is fine. It's not exactly a full TikTok cycle, let's go with that, but still, it's an improvement. But what I'm really liking from AMD's strategy at the moment is the unification of how they are dealing with, well, everything. What I mean by that is that there's been an awful lot of um, potentials. So, for example, AM4 allows you to put in a Bristol Ridge APU quite easily. Um, FP4, by the way, is purely for mobile APU, so you can't use a mobile APU, obviously. In a desktop solution so that's out the question 
But if you decide to, let's say, go ahead and buy a Bristol Ridge APU, which supposedly is going to be, there's going to be a pretty good selection of them, um, and then you decide later on, hey, I want to go Summit Ridge, you could do that. And it gives you a lot of extra flexibility with motherboards. It doesn't mean you have to bugger around so much, which was commonly the problem when it came to Kavari, when it came to Vashira, which, of course, was based on AM3 and FM2+. And it, there were just too many different platforms. And I also feel that Intel have a very similar problem with X99. And then you've got... I mean, right now you've got Broadwell E coming out. You've got Skylake and all these different bloody processors with KB Lake. And... I understand that some platforms do have different features and functionality. But for end users, it's a pain in the ass. Because it means that if you buy a Skylake processor, for example, once again, the 6700K, or even, say, the 6600, and then later on you're like, you know what, I actually just want to change my usage scenario of PC. I'm, I'm doing a lot of, let's say I'm doing a lot of 3D rendering, and I need to have a 8-core processor, or a higher processor core count, well, you're fucked. Excuse the language. You have to basically buy an ent entire new motherboard. And that's kind of a pain. So, I'm actually quite happy AMD are at least solving this problem. I'm sure that there still will be some usage scenarios which aren't 100% um, accounted for. And I wouldn't be surprised, let's say, um, it's released in October. Let's say that everything goes along smoothly. Let's say in a year and a half's time... Let's even say by the time Zen Plus comes out. I'm going to assume Zen Plus may be AM4. I don't think that's been confirmed, but let's even say it is AM4. There's a very good chance you might say to yourself, bugger it, I want a new motherboard anyway. Maybe the other motherboard's fine. Maybe, you know, the capacitors are all okay. You've not had any problems with, like, uh, things crashing or what have you. But you just say to yourself, hey, I've had this motherboard for a couple of years now. I'm going to be changing the processor anyway. And... I might as well just go with the latest iteration. Maybe, for example, a new uh, motherboard might have slightly better overclocking facilities or what have you. And obviously, the other big thing about new processors, or rather new platforms when they emerge, is especially for the first six-ish months, there is an awful lot of BIOS updates, which don't necessarily fix bugs, but what it does do is add extra functionality or solidifies functionality. For example, it might add additional RAM timings, or it might improve uh, cold boot bugs or what have you, which isn't really a feature, but you get the idea. Um, so yeah, uh, there is a whole bunch of other stuff that AMD are planning, um, but I don't really want to go into all of that. Um, there is definitely some major 2016 focuses for AMD in terms of the GPU. They are, once again, really pushing for the 14nm FinFET process with Polaris, which is going to be a performance per watt increase, of course, over the current mainstream iterations. But what they do want to do is obviously solidify their base at the moment, which is good. Um, I think, like, if you can fix one thing, then you can move on to the other. It's not good to try and have too many irons in the fire and never actually get something uh, resolved. Anyway, I think that's about it, isn't it? I think so. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.